So you know you're a binge eater, but do you know what actually constitutes binge eating disorder? I'm Jared, and this is Eating Enlightenment, and I want to talk to you today about binge eating disorder. Uh, we've all binged. Many of us have overeaten, binged, etc. It's a really, really common problem. It affects many, many people. And today I'm going to be talking about the actual definition, technical definition of binge eating disorder. And we're going to be talking about some of the symptoms, some of the causes. Um, you know, heads up, it's, this diagnosis isn't pretty. It's, um, there's a lot of shame around it. Um, but I think it's really important that we get a definition, that we start talking about this. Um, and we do not want to hide in shame or denial. I was there for a long time. We don't want that, okay? So if you find this content useful, be sure to like. It helps spread the word. Subscribe to the channel. It really helps out. And leave a comment down below which of these symptoms most matches your symptoms. So you can see here that I've, I'm about to go through Google and research binge eating disorder according to DSM-5. So I'm just going to click on all these resources and we're just going to go through together and we're going to see the definition of this. I think that's good. We only need the top five. So I'm going to save this one for last. I've already looked at it. We're going to save that one for last. And let me minimize my, well, this is okay. So look at right here. We have uh, nationaleatingdisorders.com. We have Key features are recurrent and persistent episodes of binge eating. Recurrent episodes are eating much more rapidly than normal, usually uncomfortably full, large amounts of food, alone, disgusted. There's a lot of stress regarding binge eating. And there's no compensa compensatory, geez, that's a mouthful, behaviors like purging. Okay, so the look at this is 3.5% of women. That's a lot. How many people officially diagnosed with this disorder are there? 3.5%, that's like 10 million in the United States. And this is people who are officially diagnosed. What if you uh, have an overeating problem, but you don't have binge eating disorder? You wouldn't count in that 3.5% if you're a woman, but you might still struggle with overeating. So just really important that you realize that you're not alone. You're not alone. And I'll be attaching a blog article in the description down below, which talks about like, what do you do what does it mean if you're an overeater, but you're not a binge eater, all right? So um, let's just keep on moving through these, um, these definitions real quick. Binge eating disorder diagnosis, according to Walden, eatingdisorders.com. I hope you see that this paragraph fully right here is the exact same, all right? Now, verbatim, this is the same as well. Um, now this, this site adds a little bit more, they add a little bit more detail right here. Uh, this is like a technical language for saying basically you eat a lot, you eat unusually large amounts of food, and there's a sense of a lack of control, All right, Very, very important. This site also goes on to mention that it happens, uh, the eating frequency, it's like binge eating frequency is once a week for three months, and that it's not, again, associated with purging or other conflicts compensatory geez that is a mouthful right compensatory okay uh next we have very well mind another great resource right here um i'm just yeah okay so we got the same five criteria starting to see that this is binge eating disorder now, again, you can check out that article down below because maybe you just have three of these symptoms, right? Maybe you don't really eat alone or maybe um, maybe you don't really eat you eat normal. You don't eat until you're uncomfortably full. You lose control, but you don't eat until you're uncomfortably full. Is that a binge? Like, what do you do if that's, if you're doing, if you don't meet all these criteria? Um, so article in the description, uh, this is about binge eating disorder definition according to the DSM-5. Um, the DSM-5 is also described in the article down below. Um, it's, there's five versions of it. That's why the five comes out. The first version came out in, I think, the 50s, and then it's been updated about every 10 years on average, 12 years on average um, since then. And it's got all these categories of mental health, um, and it's considered like the Bible of, 
of mental health and statistics, right? A lot of science goes into the statistics, the manual of this. Anyway, so uh, let's get into this last one, eating disorder hope, the definition of binging disorder. Uh, they have eight things. I mean, I'm pretty sure these are the top five that, I mean, we've seen this again and again. Um, now, I do want to move on to the final uh, one. And this is actually the DSM-5. Like, this is the DSM-5 and diagnostic criteria for binging disorder. This is, like, the DSM-5. This is by the NCBI. I think that's the National... Is it National Center for Behavioral? You know, I'm actually kind of curious about this. What is the NCBI about NCBI? I'll go back real quick. I should know this. Um, ah, why isn't it? You know what? I'll come back another time. Let me go back and just show you that the technical definition of this is this right here. All this highlighted stuff is the technical definition. Order. Again, send that blog post down below. Um, I think we've seen we've seen this verbatim. Um, this adds a little bit more detail. Instead of at least one day a week for three months, at least two days a week for six months. That was the previous DSM five, DSM four criteria. Um, this one adds a little bit of a of a grading scale. Extreme is mild, one to three episodes per week moderate. Um, you know, a lot of the times, too, I work with people who uh, maybe they do one episode every other week, and sometimes they say, oh, good. is that is that binge eating disorder? And no, it's not. Um, listen, I mean, you can struggle with overeating and not have binge eating disorder. Um, and great news, the cure for binge eating disorder is really the similar for any type of overeating. So, um, yeah. Uh, be sure to check out my other video. I'll link to that in the description below for the top 10 treatments about binge eating disorder. That is um, where I go to Google and I look up, you know, binge eating disorder treatment. We go through the top websites and see what they recommend. You can click on that. And that's also down below. I'm going to wrap up this video um, just by trying to enlarge my screen all the way, but also um, just encouraging you to don't hide in shame. Listen, people find pretty rapid cure, solution, treatment to overeating once they, you know, wrap their mind around it and commit in my, in my programs we journal. But once you start writing down stuff, you start seeing pretty fast progress. It's, it's really cool. So don't let this stuff keep you locked away in your head or, or alone by yourself for years and years or months or weeks. Talk about it, right? Get on the email list. Start communicating with me um, with this. Leave a comment down below. You know, connect to people who talk about this stuff. Very important that you uh, sh dig deep into your courage, right? I know it's scary, um, but but you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself. All right. So um, let's keep this video short and sweet and uh, we'll end it at that. Namaste.